Hi, I'm Mark McDonald with Home CSP. Today we're going to be introducing the Solibrium dual axis mount and showing you how easy it is to install the Tiny Tracker controllers. The Solibrium mount is a pole based mount. It rotates about the azimuth axis on the pole and the elevation is controlled by this actuator. So we can turn from east to west and adjust the tilt as, as necessary. This mount has four panels on it right now, each one producing 158 watts for 632 watts total. But with the uh, approximately 40% boost uh, in overall output throughout the day with the dual axis tracker, that's equivalent to 890 watts of, of standard panels just, just lying flat. On the elevation axis, I have a standard 24 inch stroke actuator. And I have one of our heavy duty actuators on the azimuth axis. Now with the, uh, the surface area of, of these four panels, um, either one of these is adequate, but if I had any more panels, I definitely want to make sure I had the heavy duty actuators uh, to withstand the wind loads. Wind load is very important when considering your mount and actuator selection. In the case of, of this mount, we have to consider a worst case scenario where a wind gust hits half of the the panels and provides the maximum torque on, on each axis. And so each panel has a, uh, a surface area of, of just under 11 square feet each. And at 90 miles an hour, wind exerts about 25 pounds per square foot of force. So we've got um, about 43 square foot total and uh, and you can also see that our 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 actuator arms are are slightly at a you know at a disadvantage to the wind especially um, farther out here because our control arm is is only uh, you know about uh, 12 inches or so or, or 13 inches so um, that at a at 90 mile an hour wind, we get a maximum uh, load on this actuator of, of 632 pounds, um, which is within this actuator's 800 pound uh, limit. But uh, if we went up to a 120 mile an hour winds, that's uh, a, approximately 1,100 pounds of force that we could expect on the actuator. So. Um, this actuator with its, its 2200 pound limit is, uh, is what we need for that, that job. Okay, so this is the standard Tiny Tracker kit. It's got everything pre wired with the conduit. The Tiny Tracker is mounted in this enclosure. We've got a power supply pre wired here. We've got a wire that goes to the actuator motor. We just need to run our, our 12 volt power in here to uh, operate everything and it's, it's good to go. So in general, the best place to put uh, the tracker is, is near the northeast corner of your array. Now this is a dual axis configuration and we're simply going to use two different tiny trackers one for each axis, and you'll see how easy that is to do. I'm going to take the glass off of the enclosure just to help you see the orientation of the tiny tracker. Put it on there. So, since I don't have any, uh, any rails coming out this way on the array, I'm going to use the panel frames themselves. They've got some little holes in them. I can use those to pass the zip ties through. And it will mount this like, just like so, with the LEDs pointing up. 
effectively the, these are pointing east, these are pointing west, and this will control our azimuth axis rotating about the pole there with this large actuator. For the other axis, we're going to go ahead and use use this this rail here that happens to extend out a little bit past the panels, and we'll just clip, <coughs> clip on like so, and this will provide our elevation control. So I'm going to leave the enclosure off of the tiny tractor, just make sure I don't damage the glass. You see I've taken a two wire ties, these nylon ties, and I've hooked them together like so. They need to be just a little bit longer. Now I'll just pass this through like so. And there we go. That's held. I get this. I'm going to do. I'm going to do one on each side. Here, get this balanced out. Got these panels. Tightened up. That's not going anywhere now. And I can still easily rotate this as needed for any fine tuning adjustment on it. Now we got it in place. Put the glass enclosure back on. Now normally these will seal up just fine, but every once in a while you won't. You might need to use some of the silicone adhesive so be sure and and check yours after the uh, after the first rainstorm and make sure you've you've got everything sealed up the tiny tracker boards are conformally coated to protect against moisture but still you want to try to avoid water as much as possible that's why we've got this uh, this conduit totally protecting all of our wires from not only water but rodents and birds and whatever might chew on it throughout the years because we want to have trouble free operation here. Okay so with the with the Tiny Tracker HD mounted up on the solar panels we just need to secure the, uh, the conduit line coming down here Start that here. I've got some more ties passed through my conduit box here. Making sure we have plenty of slack in the conduit there for the rotation. The actuator is fully retracted right now. Get these attached. ready to run, uh, run the wire to the motor. Okay, so now we're going to install the second tiny tracker for the elevation axis on the mount. So in this case, we have the, uh, the LEDs pointing uh, roughly north and south so they can control the elevation axis. I'm just going to clip this on this rail like so. up really good and rotate it to adjust it. Put my glass cover back on. Now we just need to route this back to the motor to finish the installation.
I think I'm just going to try to just tie this right on here. Again, you want to be sure and pull the pull the grommet out of the uh, closure. Pass your wire through it. Before connecting the wires, will you regret that later? So I wrap the cable through the uh, through the clamp here. These all extra wires have already been cut up. We just once again, we don't need the sensor. You can see that the uh, the thick motor leads are connected to these two terminals on the end. So we're just going to install our, our wires there. And tighten that down. Okay. So, now we just need to... Uh, Connect the uh, power to the 12 volt leads in the time tracker. Once again, we should see the actuator first extend and then retract if we've got the polarity on the, the motor correct. And we have to really be careful here and get the right polarity because otherwise we'll damage this board. So negative to the white, positive to the red. So just then it, it ran out one second and then back in. So I got the polarity right on the wires. And now after about 10 more seconds here, it begins adjusting the tilt for the current solar position. And there we go. Okay, so for reinstalling the motor cover here, uh, the grommet's got this groove in it. And I just uh, slide that, the cover on there. Got the flat part lining up with the housing. So that can go on just like so. And everything's sealed up. One of the things that's important to do before you hook up the tiny tracker is make sure the limits are set properly on your actuators. So it's useful to have a small battery and some jumpers like this so you can uh, just run the motor uh, manually and make sure uh, that everything works, goes to the limits of motion without uh, anything hitting. So I'm just going to set the battery down there and uh, put the power up. Okay, that's going the wrong way. Got to reverse the wires here. So I was running a little bit slow right now because it's just at 12 volts instead of 24. It'll take it just a little while. But, um, the whole panel is rotating right now. Oh gosh, and I hope this clears. Okay. Well, I noticed that this isn't going to quite clear. So. So this needs to be uh, adjusted just slightly here. Okay, well we were adjusting the, uh, the limits on the uh, main motor and fortunately we noticed that this had been installed a little bit too deep so that this wasn't gonna clear as it was turning. Now I just have to loosen these, these bolts here.
You want to be a little bit careful here. We've got the load on. Okay, now I'm just going to Slide this up just a little bit. Now I can tell that's gonna that's gonna clear down there. And tighten this. Good to have an assistant with this part of the job. Sure, those are really snug, but don't over tighten because you don't want to pinch the tube. Okay, and now I can reconnect power. And things keep moving, and everything clears here. So next I'm going to be watching, making sure that the limit switch on here trips before my arm extends too far, because otherwise with several hundred pounds of force this will just begin to try to tear things apart. I can tell I'm, I'm nowhere near the, uh, the limit switch here, I'm going to go ahead and just that with the screwdriver here. Um, first we have to loosen the, the set screw and then we can uh, turn it from the end. Okay, so we're almost at our limit on the actuator where we want to be, but it's still quite a bit of distance here. So I loosen this little screw right here and then there's a slot in the end. We can turn it from down here. And I just keep keep turning it until this gets up close to the, the little switch right there. And I want to get just a little bit further, so I'm not going to quite get this there. I go that far, I'm going to tighten it up here. Let it see and run and see if it trips in time. That will we'll have to adjust it. So hopefully that's gonna go really soon. And apparently not in time. So I decided to pull the wires and stop it. And now now I'm going to uh, just go ahead and turn it until I hear the switch click. I could see it pressing against it, and then I finally heard the uh, finally heard the click. So that's where I want to stop. I'm going to reverse the wires here for now. Back up the actuator. Okay, backed up all the way off the switch. I'm going to test the switch one more time. Running forward. And that 
click just in the nick of time. In fact, I want to adjust that a little bit more. Okay, once more, I'm going to back it up. Hopefully I've moved far enough for the uh, reset the switch and I'm going to try again here. Oh, no, it hasn't reset the switch yet. Okay, I heard the switch click, so we go forward. There's a little bit of what we call hysteresis there. Okay, we've taken care of our limits made sure everything's fine there. Now I'm just going to go ahead and connect, uh, connect the motor for the final time. Actually, I might need to reverse the polarity on this, but I'm not quite sure. So we're not going to put the cover on yet. So the motor's been fully retracted, and now I hook up the tiny track. And it's supposed to run forward and then reverse, but watch what happens when I connect it. It just ran one direction and then stopped. So what's what's happened is it hasn't run far enough forward to reset the limit switch. So we only saw it run one way. Um, and then after 50, 15 seconds, it started to do its tracking to, uh, to rotate. But I want to make sure it runs both ways. So now that we know it's run far enough, I'm going to, I'm going to remove power Wait a little while, make sure that the capacitors drain out and connect it and just make sure that I get that both direction motion I want to see out of it. So that, just then it did it. Hopefully you heard that one second one way, one second back in. And now after a few more seconds, it'll start to turn to orient itself for the sun right now. So there it goes. The Tiny Tracker HD is is working. All we need to do is, if, if you connected power here, put the cover on, put the cover back on the motor, and you're finished. So we saw how easy it was to install the tiny trackers and uh, make them work with our mount. And uh, I hope you enjoyed our video today. Thanks for watching. Be sure to visit the Home CSP website for uh, all of our products and lots of information and helpful resources for solar tracking.